Namaste. So today we're going to read a few sutras, four sutras, from the Tantroktang Devi Suktam, which is a beautiful prayer by the demigods, and excerpted from chapter 5 of the Devi Mahatmya, 700 verses that go uh, before, in the beginning, of the uh, Devi Saptasati. So these verses are very important. They're spoken by the demigods. When they have trouble uh, uprooting the demons who have taken over their territory, they turn to her because she is the great power, the Shakti. So, with that in mind, let's hear these verses. Namo Devyai Mahadevyai Shivayai Satatang Namaha Nama Prakrityai Badrayai Niyata Pranatasmatam Obeisances to the Devi, to the great Devi. Obeisances always to her who is ever auspicious. Obeisances to her who is the primordial cause and the sustaining power. We attentively make obeisance to her. Raudrayai namo nityayai Gauriyai dhatriyai namo namaha Jyotnyayai chenduru pinyai Sukhayai satatam namaha Obeisances to her who is terrible, to her who is eternal. Obeisances to Gauri, the supporter of the universe. Obeisances always to her who is of the form of the moon and moonlight and happiness itself. Kalyanyai pranatang vridhyai siddhyai kurmo namo namaha nairityai bhubhritram lakshmyai sarvanyai te namo namaha we bow to her who is welfare. We make obeisances to her who is prosperity and success. Obeisances to the consort of Shiva, who is herself the good fortune, as well as the misfortune of kings. Durgayai Durga Parayai Sarayai Sarvakarinyai Kyatyai Tataiva Krishnayai Dumrayai Satatang Namaha Obeisances always to Durga, who takes one across in difficulties, who is essence, who is the author of everything who is knowledge of discrimination, and who is blue-black as well as smoke-like in complexion. The Sanskrit is very beautiful. Now, let's take a closer look at the translations. It begins by offering obeisances to the Devi, the goddess. But which Devi? <laughs> There's thousands or even hundreds of thousands or millions of Shakti Devis. Well, which one? The great Devi, Mahadevi, uh, the greatest goddess. So what are the characteristics of this goddess? Well, Shivayai Satatam, she's all auspicious. And Satatam means eternal or complete. And it can also modify the next word, namaha, obeisances. 
So it can mean eternal obeisances, obeisances again and again, unlimitedly. Now, what about this goddess? We offer our obeisances to Prakriti. Prakriti is the source of the elements of the material universe. So in other words, she is not only the creatrix, the one who creates the universe, but she is also the uh, raw materials of this universe. Now the scientists tell us that the different elements, chemical elements, are produced in uh, early stars. And when the stars go nova, they transmute hydrogen and helium into the heavier elements. Well, who designed this system? Who created the original stars? You see, something like this doesn't just pop up randomly. The scientists say it's chance. huh? Well, how about that big telescope, Mr. Scientist? Did that just pop into existence by chance? No way. So we see that any powerful or complex system has to be created by intelligence. And the more powerful, more complex the system is, the greater the intelligence needed to create it. So when we look at this universe, even if the scientists' theories are correct, and it all started from a big bang, <laughs> who lit the fuse? Who created the conditions that led to the Big Bang? And what was there before it? So she is the power, Mahashakti, the greatest power from which all other powers emanate. Then Badraya, she is so auspicious. Huh? Simply to worship her is the source of all good fortune. This is why the demigods, being intelligent and powerful themselves with respect to human beings, take shelter in her when they have a conflict or a problem that they can't solve. Because she is the ultimate refuge. She's the ultimate savior. She herself is the spiritual path. Bhadra, it also means becoming. So she is the source and the science and the path of becoming. So in other words, whenever we want to become something or do something or get liberation or do anything auspicious that leads to good results, we are directly or indirectly worshiping her. We should understand her real nature. She is niyata pranata, the sustaining power, prana. Prana not only means breath, it means energy, life energy. Without her, nothing can live. She is kundalini, the life energy that sits at the base of the spine, just waiting for us to get our egos out of the way. <laughs> So she can rise up and give us great bliss and enlightenment. Now looking at the next verse. She can be, she can be terrible when she defeats the demons. Huh? She appears very uh, difficult to conquer. But she's also Dhatriyai. She's the supporter of the universe. Without her, this universe would not exist and cannot exist without her constant guidance and protection. Well, what to speak of ourselves? Therefore, anyone who's intelligent will take shelter of her and experience the great benedictions that result from her worship. Then what? Jyotsna, huh? she is light, Jyoti. The moon, the sun, the stars, the light of intelligence, the light 
of spiritual being, ultimately the light of consciousness, which illuminates everything. Without consciousness, nothing would exist. You know, the scientists have it backwards. They theorize that consciousness is an epiphenomenon of the brain function. Epiphenomena means something that doesn't really exist. It only appears to, be, to exist. <laughs> they have it exactly backwards. The universe is an epiphenomenon of consciousness. Without consciousness, nothing else would exist. Because the only way we're aware of anything is through consciousness, isn't it? <laughs> so consciousness is the primordial force, the cause of everything else, and the solution to all problems as well. And she's also sukhayai, unto her who is happiness itself. She is the sweetness of life. If you've ever meditated to the point where you could give up all desires and just be, not have to become anything, not have to go anywhere, do anything, or even think, <laughs> you'll know there's tremendous happiness within us. That happiness is her, the Great Mother. The next verse, she is Kalyani, she is welfare, well-being, and those who worship her experience this directly. I can't tell you, you have to experience it for yourself, to worship her a little bit, uh, either by chanting one of her mantras, or doing some ceremonies, or make an offering to one of her devotees, or something. Uh, uh, do something to please her, and you'll be amazed. It will transform your life. It will bring you to a higher state, not only of happiness, but of being and consciousness. Now, this is sukham, the sweetness of life. And siddhayai, she is, she is vridha and she is siddha. She is power and she is opulence, strength, huh? and the ability to do anything by yogic powers, siddha. And the ultimate siddhi, of course, is liberation, illumination, enlightenment. And these are all within us. Try to understand, the goddess is within us, as our very life energy. She is us. She is everything. She's the whole universe. So certainly she is to be found within. Although there are temple forms, there are images, there are ceremonies and things that we can do externally to connect with her in yoga. Still, when we find her, we find her within. And then Kurmo, she's wealth, prosperity, success. Lakshmi, wealth. Uh -huh. So all these desirable things are expansions of her. Directly, in a personal form. Consciousness is involved there too. And she's Nartyai. She is the uh, consort of the great dancer, Shiva. Shiva is the, is the nritya, the dancer, and she's Nartyai, the uh, wife or consort of the great dancer. And Sarvanyai, she is everything. Huh? She is a, uh, both the good fortune and the ill fortune of powerful people. We often see people rise to great heights only to fall down again. And why is that? Because they did something that offended her. They became arrogant. They failed to acknowledge her 
as the real source of their power. Oh, there's a beautiful story, even though it's going to probably make us go over time. I have to tell it. One time there was a king who got kicked out of his own kingdom by some plot. He was betrayed by his own ministers. So he went to the forest and he took shelter in the ashram of a great sage. In that ashram, there was also a merchant who had also been betrayed by his wife and family, lost all of his fortune and had to leave home like a beggar. So he also wound up in the ashram of the sage. So they asked the sage, what can we do to restore our good fortune? And he was, worship the goddess, worship the goddess. Huh? So they did. They went to the bank of a river. They assembled all kinds of ingredients for puja. And for a year or two or three years, I forget what it was, they did nothing really but worship her and make all kinds of offerings. And finally, they were so determined to get her grace that they were planning to actually cut strips of flesh from their own bodies and offer them in a sacred fire. At this point, the goddess appeared to them and said, I'm very pleased with you. I will offer you any boon any grace that you want. So the king said, my dear goddess, please restore my kingdom huh? so that I can go back and save my family and, you know, put everything back in the right way. And she said, no problem. You can leave tonight and go back to your kingdom tomorrow and you will find that everything is as it was. The coup has been overthrown and your kingdom is restored. Then she said to the merchant, well, what about you? What do you want? And he said, my dear goddess, I have seen this material world is simply a place of suffering. So I really don't want anything that is subject to decay. I want liberation, that knowledge knowing which there is nothing left to be known and by which all desires are satisfied forever. And so she blessed him and he became liberated. Jivan Mukti. He spent the rest of his life touring around different holy places. What a great personality. So she is the good fortune and the misfortune if you displease her. Now, ultimately, this prayer is offered to Durga. Durga Ayai, Durga Parayai. Uh, Durga means a protector, and Parayai means she is the greatest protector. Para. Uh, she takes one across all difficulties. Now, we've experienced this directly, personally. That's the only reason I teach this stuff. It's not just a story in some book. It's my direct experience. So I recommend for everyone to approach Goddess Durga. Uh, she has some nice lions <laughs> as her pets and protectors. Not that she needs protection, but she allows them to render that service. Saraye Sarvakarinyai. She takes one across all difficulties, all problems. Uh, Kyatyai. She is knowledge. What knowledge? Tataiva. The knowledge of that. Tat. The Brahman. The absolute the pure, unconditioned, objectless awareness. See, these prayers are very deep. And if you know what's hidden within them, you can realize it for yourself. And so she's known as Krishna. Huh? Just like Krishna is the avatar of Vishnu, she is Krishna, 
the feminine form of the absolute, absolute with qualities, uh, saguna, and dhumrariyai, she is smoke-colored, means grayish, like a monsoon cloud, heavy with rains. So just like a monsoon cloud can pour unlimited amount of rain, she can give unlimited amount of blessings. So we approach her for her grace because she is the cause of all good fortune. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti. Aung.